such an opportunity here because finally there is an industry that is kind of high tech and sexy where there are a lot of jobs uh, in Europe, much different than all these other industries, yet we're missing that opportunity to communicate well about it. And I think the, this industry still has to do a better job at pointing out to people, as we've been trying out for years, but we haven't done a good enough job at it yet, to basically explain where the jobs are, you know, what, what the bigger societal benefit is, how the cost roadmap looks like, etc. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I had, sorry, I have a question here, a person who's patiently waiting with the microphone, and then we'll come to you. Thank you. Uh, Bert Hertzler, KU Leuven, in Belgium. Um, there's two questions and aspects I wanted to highlight. Uh, one is that I still find from uh, discussions with colleagues, uh, people from the industry, that consumers are misinformed about the advantages of PV. Even without subsidies, I did the calculations for Belgium, taking into account the probable rise of electricity prices for the next 20 years, PV is already good enough. Secondly, um, my question or suggestion, if it's applicable, why not put uh, some kind of real European quality label which would lead to a uh, feed-in tariff or something along the lines? In the sense that if you have now some producers, some better, some worse in China, but also in Europe, um, who produce bad quality modules, they're flooding the market or have been flooding the market at this moment. In five to ten years' time, those, mo those modules will start to fail, and then consumer confidence in PV will plummet. Is there some way of, on the one hand, informing consumers that PV is really good right now, and secondly, to, for instance, create jobs here by going into testing of uh, modules on a large scale? So a question there linking quality issues to consumer trust issues. Anybody want to comment on that? Speak for itself. I would yeah. like to put that question to, to you, maybe partially, because you know, from our experience, we are from India, we are a part of Tata's, and as she said, that we were a part of BP Solar uh, as a JV. So what BP taught us was that, you know, simply if you, in, in a module, if you just follow those IEC codes, IEC 61215 or 613170, whatever, those codes. Now, they do not add up. It, it just checks the performance of the module it's on, on date. It does not confirm that the module will last and do well for 25 years or 20 years. So to actually guarantee the power warranty or whatever to guarantee its performance, you actually have to do, you know, the heat run test for 200 hours more than what IEC specifies. You have to do the damp heat test for so many hours more than, or the wind load test or whatever. There are four or five basic, very, very big tests. And we were taught that and we did that because uh, we were exporting our modules to all these German and Spanish markets in the name of PP Solar, made in Bangalore in India. And, and, and we are still following that. But then we see, as he says, in many modules that they are just ticking the box of IEC and they just apply. So can you do something to, yeah. you know, get that? <laughs> <laughs> that by tomorrow, I just heard. <laughs> Again, my experts can confirm what I said before. We have decided to set up and to update this laboratory, MISPRA, owned by the GSU, the Commission, to really look at the all aspects that really makes the difference. Not, so not only the efficiency, but also, as you said, time, lifetime, you know, quality. Because it's, I agree it's very important, as we mentioned before, that this is very important for the acceptability in the end. Yeah. So people have to understand that whatever they will buy or they will install is somewhat with respect standards, they respect the certain qualification level, that they know where it does come from. So these are all the aspects that I said before, we realize if we want to develop a stable future solution for this uh, electricity uh, source, we do not need only political support and fiscal incentive. We do also need an overall, let's say, environmental trust accept, so that the people again have a final acceptability, they have accepted the solution they buy. So I fully agree that we need to go along with this, and that's why this laboratory 
will be very instrumental and at disposal of the industry. I want again to stress the point, we will migrate, we will invite the industry, we will invite the key stakeholders to see and, and, and get profit of this new, let's say, attempt this new procedure that we want to, to go along with you, at least here in Europe, because I fully agree. Stefan Rink, you have a comment. Yeah, I think part of your comment or question was also about the reputation of photovoltaics. And, and I think I, I personally can feel that the re reputation of photovoltaics is becoming worse. A lot of people asking myself, what's going on in the industry? Why, why, is, there, why is it so bad, for example? What, what's going on, really? Yeah? Have we oversubsidized that, and now we have a big bubble, and what's going on? And if I follow the argumentation, even in the newspaper or in, 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 in other areas, we can really see that uh, the uh, people which are against PV, yeah, that they are arguing and say, hey, we already subsidized the photovoltaic business in the history with such an amount of money and they are arguing about the future with the history. Yeah? And it's a completely different, uh, or it's a, it's a big mistake. And I think we have to work on the reputation and we also have to find a way against the people which are still believe that uh, nuclear power is nice and if you remember one of the very big German electricity producers was until a couple of months ago still arguing that nuclear power is better than everything else and that we should go back here. Yeah? And, and we have to find a way how to improve the reputation of photovoltaics. And I can tell you, my feeling is at the moment it's become really difficult because of all the companies which are in trouble, yeah? because we have underutilization, the market growth is not there, and we have to find a way to overcome that. And uh, I, don't, I don't have a solution so far, but we have to work on that. If you ask the, the, the man on the street or the well-informed newspaper reading uh, uh, electri uh, uh, electri the constitu yeah, <laughs> even they still have in their minds from a few years back this cadmium thing. And I, uh, looking back in retrospect, I, I, I'm angry why we didn't uh, see what it was back then. Because, of course, we didn't have uh, cadmium telluride uh, modules. So we said, OK, it's solar world going after someone else and, uh, in a legal way. And it, that's still out there. Another thing is, if you look at Germany, um, the, the way uh, our industry association has been um, working with politicians has been too much. That was unhealthy, bad for the industry. And of course, there's a lot of money to be made if you can push back the, fee, the change date in the feed-in tariff, if you can get down uh, the, the cuts, that's going to, and, and that happened because there was so much money involved. And for other industries, it would have been greed, of course, and, uh, but for this is a special industry. I'd rather have money given out to the people working in this industry making a fortune. It's a lot better spent than uh, going to uh, investment banking, for instance. But, but uh, still, um, that too might depend on your position in the value <laughs> chain. <laughs> well, no, everybody uh, profited in, in, from the two slow cuts in the feed-in tariff, main market Germany, and that was short-sighted, I would say, not in the interest of long-term players in the industry, and uh, we were not mature enough to call it out or to stop it back then, unfortunately. And if you talk to politicians now in Berlin, they have a horrible view of the industry. Still, um, it's good to see that the most people still love the sun, still can see PV is a wonderful, uh, wonderful source of uh, electricity because that's, that's just how it is and people are going to come around. But we need to get our act together and uh, need to care, take care of our industry things. I, I do think so. So I think, I know that there are hands still up, but actually we are quite significantly over our time. However, we have an opportunity f to discuss amongst ourselves now because we do have a networking reception. So I'll ask those who have been raising their hands to perhaps uh, forgive me for now declaring our panel ended, but our networking session beginning. And let me say many, many thanks to all of our panelists from this panel and from our other panel as well for these truly very, very interesting discussions and for all of your contributions and to all of you in the audience as well. Many thanks for your attention and your participation. And uh, 
Let me also thank our organizers, WIP, and also, of course, EUPDSEC for their support and for their also very gracious hostessing and hosting of uh, the reception outside in the foyer. So, warm thanks to all of you, and uh, see you for more discussion outside. <laughs>